So, yeah, my name is Melissa Griesel. That's my maiden name. I'm Melissa Libana. I've gotten married, but I started my social media business after I had my son, Josh, and I wanted some flexibility in terms of being a parent, but I kind of came on at what I consider the birth of social media. It was the very early days of content, and um, I, I have seen the growth and the change of social media happen over the last 10 years, and it's, it's been wonderful. It's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. Um, I'm a digital marketing consultant and content strategist, as mentioned, and there's a few key learnings that I want to kind of unpack and talk about today um, and take you on a journey and a story that I want to tell you about social media. So a few of the things that I want to cover is really about the importance of identifying your audience, because once you identify your audience, you can really start to craft the correct types of content that will resonate with your audience, that will start to get you the engagement and the returns on investment that you're looking for. It's also really important to talk about our long-term vision for a brand. You know, we, we have to do things that will drive the longer vision um, down the line for businesses. Growing followers, growing community. I love community. It's something that I find so important. And it's one of the things that I thoroughly enjoy is training up community managers in my space to, to help businesses have conversations with their brands, to have professional attendance to queries and questions so your audiences feel heard. And that's something that I'm just really, really passionate about as well as growing communities. In order for social media to thrive and be successful in your business, it's really important to understand what that landscape is and how it fits into your broader marketing structures and goals and the, and the marketing landscape, how digital places itself. So uh, I want to have a, um, quite an interesting discussion around that. Um, and then obviously talking about crafting a compelling customer experience. How do we craft content that resonates and that reaches the goals that we want? How do you build a team that's going to get you the content, the copy, the, the voice, the tone, the look, the feel, everything rolling out strategically on time? Um, it, it, I love my team. The, the team that I work with, I, the, I adore them and I'm just so grateful to have such a fantastic team. So. I just want to speak a little bit about what you need to look for in terms of building the correct team, and then obviously how to track the results of your social media efforts. I'm going to jump straight in and just talk a little bit about how social media started. It, it, it started as a publishing platform, and in the beginning, businesses were all about sharing content on social. And when Facebook first came out and we had things like MySpace and YouTube is one of the biggest social media platforms out there, it was really about crafting content, and then how do we drive traffic over to websites? The fact that social media is there to also entertain and create engagement, most of the time there's a background, well, I don't even want to say a background, but there's a core goal of having to ultimately drive sales. So we've seen social media mature in its growth of coming as these community oriented platforms to now being advertising models and placements for advertising, and then also becoming part of the you know, much more considered marketing mix. Because I kind of feel that in, in the digital marketing space, a lot of traditional marketers didn't always understand social media and how it plugged into the marketing side of things. And, and now I'm so grateful that I have clients that really value the social media support and the, the, the arm of the marketing that social media offers. So... Three of the core things that I feel that every business needs to consider um, is basically monitoring social media conversations. You want to know who's saying what about your brand. Is it positive? Is it negative? What is the sentiment around your brand? Um, and it all, the, listening to those conversations really also allows you to understand in a consumer's mind where your brand is in their journey, in their life how it fits in. So I do a lot of social listening for, for, for my brands and we apply all that thinking. And then we also manage the conversations in terms of what we, a customer service channel. So that's, um, again, something with the communities that I'm really passionate about. Um, with social media, we have to always look at the ROI. We need to track our KPIs. And this is something that a lot of brands and businesses struggle with is, how do we track social media KPIs? And it's really straightforward. And I, I want to tell you today how easy it is and how you can set up beautiful um, ROI KPIs and, um, and, and you can follow those. And every month you can look and see what the performance is and take those learnings and apply it. 
Social media relies heavily on social media ads. And so having a good paid media strategy and a good paid media buyer or planner to align with whatever content you're doing is really crucial to your success on social. Hootsuite do a fantastic report every year. And last week, they released their latest Digital Trends 2022 report. You can go and Google it and access it. It's a 300-page document. There's also a concise 30-page document that gives a very brief overview. But for every country in the world, you will see amazing statistics on your country and the social channels that are being used the most, the usership, and will give you a really good indication of where to put your efforts in social media and a lovely starting base. So I think what is extraordinary about this slide, especially post pandemic well, I don't want to say post-pandemic, but having dealt with the pandemic and seeing this incredible rise in digital engagement across all platforms as people were staying at home, is that 50% of the population, close to 60%, is on social media. So it's not something that we can ignore. We have to be on social. And how we manage that social media presence is crucial. What's also lovely to see is the amount of time that people spend on social media. It's about two and a half hours a day that people are checking Twitter, going on LinkedIn, on Instagram, speaking with families on Facebook, whatever it may be. So there's a considerable amount of time that people are spending on social media, engaging, and there's a, a considerable amount of time for an opportunity for your brand to be seen and to engage with consumers um, on social. Before we start, um, I just I know most people in the marketing space understand what it means to identify your audience, but I cannot stress it enough because if we don't identify who we're speaking to, we can't craft messaging and content that will relate and resonate with our audience. So we need to define our target audience. We know that we can look at gender, age, marital status, just the kind of standard demographic things, but we want to take a deeper dive into our audiences. We want to learn a little bit more about what makes them tick, what are their interests and hobbies, and where we can plug into them on daily user journey. You can look at, in, um, in your region, you can Google, and I'm sure you can come up and find market region demographics, and I really encourage you to have a look at that and, and search for that in your area, wherever you might be in, in, in the world, and have a look and, and start to get a broader understanding of exactly who you're talking to. And if you're unsure, you can have focus groups and you can also pull together surveys that you can send out to um, if you've got a small consumer base, but ask them questions that you need because at the end of the day, you're just trying to make a better service offering. So never be shy to put those sorts of focus groups or those sorts of questionnaires or surveys together. So once we know our target audience, we can really start to unpack what that consumer profile looks like. I always like to have a look at my brand. I, I try to look at the aging demographics. I separate them into quadrants and I, I start to look, all right, we've got a predominantly 23, I mean, 24 to 35, but then there's a secondary audience of maybe 35 to 45. What do those audiences do in their spare time? What do they spend their money on? What radio stations are they listening to? What are their hobbies and interests? You know, and we can start to then craft consumer profiles and we can start to have a better understanding of the types of messagings and content that we can craft to resonate with, with a more defined audience. Because I don't believe in a spray and pray attitude. I believe that we can have always on content that is brand love content that just enforces what the brand is about. But you also want to drill down a little bit to create content that is really valuable to consumers, that encourages them to want to follow and engage with your brand. So I'm sure many of you might have seen what a modern customer profile template looks like, but it is really a deep dive. It looks not just at the age and where the person stays, but there we look on the right, it's got the habits, the lifestyle, values, and you can then say, all right, well, we want to craft pieces of content around these particular values and interests and it will also give you an indication of the types of conversations that you can look out for, that you can possibly tap into. Um, it's, it's very important in social media to be agile and to, as much as you want to plan, sometimes you also have to create things on the fly because there's a conversation trending or whatever. And if you follow your audience and you know them well, you'll be able to tap in and listen to the right types of conversations. So there's a very big difference between demographics and psychographics. And so that's why I like to do the much deeper dive 
to look into the personality and the emotional triggers that um, audiences have. So once you know who your audience is, we need to really look at what your long-term vision is for your brand. That's part of the strategic lens that we're going to look through because we have to identify what are the, the pitfalls or the challenges or your goals that you want. Is it to grow your customer base? Is it to grow financially? And I think most of us can tick all of these boxes or grow brand awareness and loyalty. But some of these do take priority. So you'll see that most brands will look for an awareness um, goal on social. And I often say that social media is like a digital billboard for your brand. So, um, but we must never forget, and I just want to put a caveat to this, is if you were not on the internet, people must still be aware of your brand. They have engaged with your brand at some point in the digital space and to be top of mind. So it's very important that they also have a really wonderful customer experience with you maybe in store or at any point. And then that is resonated onto the digital and social space. So lead and generation is the second most important, increase community engagement, grow my brand's audience, and then increase web traffic. All of these obviously work together and we like to craft content in such a way that we are trying to reach as many touch points as possible. So we need to set KPIs and metrics. What I do for most of my clients is I create what I call a digital tracker. And it's a document that is a live document and on a monthly basis, we document how many followers we have, how much engagement we have, how many posts we have, what were the top three performing posts. And at a glance, at any point, if any of my clients need to pull some data, I can quickly share it with them. And if they have to go to a meeting or whatever, I can say, these are your performance metrics. This is what we gauge ourselves on in terms of success. I use a myriad of um, tools that I, I love. So Hootsuite is one of my scheduling tools. Uh, Social Bakers is great for reporting and insight. And Sprout Social, I've actually walked quite a long journey with over the past few years. And I, as much as I've tried other, other platforms, I always find my way coming back to Sprout. I love their reporting style. I love the details. I love the flexibility. I love that I can adjust things for campaigns. Um, if I need additional plugins or there's additional things that I want to research, really, really important. So once you understand why your business is on social media, you can then set your KPIs and your goals. And then you need to set a social media mission statement. You have to know, again, why are we on social? So why do you want to be on social and what is the narrative that you want to drive? And it comes down to core marketing beliefs and how, what is the problem that we're trying to solve? What new promotions and campaigns do we want to put out? How do we increase numbers and how does social media support that? Is it having online shop integration with e-commerce? Is it driving and tracking website traffic by putting pixels, Facebook pixels on social media so that we can look at our Google Analytics and we can make sure that we are tracking that those conversions are coming from social. So at the end of the month, we can say we had X amount of social media conversions and we can start to look where we need to put our efforts in. So I, one of the biggest compliments I got from a client recently was how much they loved how I felt so strongly about integrating so our social media efforts with the broader marketing team. So whatever they were doing with activations, what they were doing with PR, anything like that. We loved to know about anything that they're doing and how we can amplify and give more noise and voice um, and fit it into our content pal pillars and make it relevant. Um, and sometimes we look at a piece of content and we feel, okay, this might not be relevant. Let's rather go with this one. So we don't put everything out. We do choose. And that comes to my next thing is we set smart social media goals. Very, you have to be very specific about what you want to put out. And I think if you always go back to these SMART goals with any piece of content and you have a look at it and you ask yourself these five questions, does this piece of content answer a specific need? You know, who am I talking to and what do I want to achieve? If you can tick that box, how am I going to measure the performance of this piece of content? Is it how many likes and comments I get? Is it how many shares and saves? Is it how many link clicks I get? You know, what is the goal of that piece of content? And then I want to be able to measure it. You also have to be reasonable and think of that goal as attainable. I've sometimes had clients who put massive KPIs in place and we, we have to kind of say, cool, we can do that, but our budget needs to be significantly bigger in order to reach that attainable goal. 
Sometimes we don't always have that budget. Sometimes we think very much out the box and we can be super creative and, and do things that drive massive amounts of engagements to try attain that goal. But we also need to all agree on that attainable goal. Being relevant is really important. It's what all social media needs to do. You don't want to put out a post that is irrelevant, that just gets lost in a feed, um, that we have a term in social where we say you hear crickets and you put something out. It's very, very quiet. No, nobody says anything. Your heart kind of sinks. You put all this effort into this, into crafting this post and you don't hear anything. Why is what I always want to ask. So I go back and I analyze those posts and I question why is that post not resonating? Let's see, is there a different spin we can put on it? How can we recraft that, that piece of creative? And then we keep going. And then the time frame, often we have campaigns that will kick off that run for about three months to maybe three years, sometimes if it's a deeper, longer type of campaign. And then we have our always on content. So I find that the time frame is really important and you can set that up with any of your reporting tools as well to monitor the time frames of specific ca campaigns, hashtags, anything like that, that you are wanting to specifically say at the end of these three months, I want to very definitively see what was the share of voice? How many times was the hashtag engaged with? What were the key types of conversations? How many people engaged? How many people converted? So the time frame is really important. And at the end of the day, what we're trying to do for a brand and for a business is to have long-term sustainable growth. There's five core pillars of social media marketing and that's strategy, planning and publishing. So you will obviously sit with your communication strategist in, in, in your broader brand and see how social and digital plays into the bigger media marketing plan. You will then implement your tools in terms of drawing up a content calendar, mapping out over a month or three months, how many pieces of content are you going to create? What days are we going to roll those out on? What are the more popular days and times? Is it Monday at 10 a.m.? Is it Wednesday at 2 p.m.? Is LinkedIn better at 8 a.m. on Friday? But again, your audience will dictate those best publishing times and plannings. You, I know that with some of my, my brands, the best time to post is at four in the morning because they'll see it first thing in the morning. Other brands, I know it's Sunday evening because that particular audience sits on a Sunday evening and gets ready for the week and reads articles and preps for the week. So there's a little bit of what we call A-B testing that you need to do. And I always like to take at least one to two to three months most to test times and then to eventually you find almost like a mathematical sum of what works for your brand. You'll have a very, very good idea of what times and what days you get the most engagement on. Something that throws it out the window ever so slightly is advertising. If you're going to boost a post, it doesn't matter what time you post um, because the paid media behind that, that piece of content is going to just throw it into the, um, um, it's going to kick that algorithm aside and it's going to throw it into the targeted audience that you want. Listening and engagement comes back to the reporting. I, I love hearing what, um, what brands um, how they're being perceived and the conversations that are being had and using those insights then to drive more kind of content suggestions and crafting more relevant content. The analytics and reporting and then obviously the advertising is very important. I'm going to be touching on the advertising at the end again because it comes up as one of the top trends for 2022. You're going to see immense uh, amount of budgets being put into advertising but a lot more platforms coming up. So I'm going to have an interesting discussion around that just now. Oh, sorry. So for all my brands, I draw a picture of success. There are certain brands that I look to that I just think hit the nail on the head. They make amazing content. Mercedes-Benz is one of them. Lego is outstanding. And Headspace is also fantastic. I think what's very interesting about these screen grabs and how I placed them, and I didn't realize till afterwards, is if you look at the Headspace, that green post, and Lego's green post, they're almost identical. So you can see that there's a a style of content that's emerging. Um, and, and this is in the style of like a tweet that somebody wrote or a status that somebody wrote. With Headspace, they don't do quotes. They really just do quotes from their founders and the, and the main um, team. And, but they carry enough gravitas to drive them in the thought leadership space. So if you can identify a few brands that you think do it really, really well, you love the way their content is, I would 
share that with your marketing team and your social media person, because often you can look at something and say, I don't like that, but you need to be able to say why you don't like it. And it's wonderful for a social media marketing manager or community manager to be given what that picture of success is in the business owner's mind so we can work to that attainable goal. So these are just th three brands off the, off the top of my head that I love and I, and I regularly check in on the types of content that they do. It's relevant and they just have just fun, lovely, engaging content. So we tend to draw up content pillars to make telling the brand story easier. And it just helps to declutter the mind and start to put things into buckets. So you can almost start to craft and you can brief your teams in easier because you have a very good understanding of where this content idea that you have, which pillar it fits under. You can question yourself quickly and say, hang on a moment, is this on brand? Does this fit into any of our content pillars? It kind of keeps you honest, if I can say that. So these are kind of generic um, content pillars, but each one you can unpack and make your own. You know, every brand needs to be a little bit promotional, talk about what they do, what the offering is, it needs to be educational. You know, if it's like with Headspace, it's a mental health app and, and it's they share a lot of information around mental health. Lego, a lot around the amazing benefits of building Lego. Community, is there a post that you want to craft that just engage community, maybe asking questions, maybe just pushing engagement, you know, getting people to comment and to be a little bit playful, you know, um, entertaining. Some posts are just fun. They're just, it was a lovely piece of content to engage with. It might be something that you might want to share with your friends and DM them the link and DM them the video and you just thoroughly enjoyed that piece of content. And then there's the engagement posts, which I tied into the community pillar as well. But like I say, some, some posts I'm sure you've seen where it's like drop an emoji, you know, is it a smiley face, sad face or whatever, but those types of posts do really, really well. And the more comments that you get on posts, the more it pushes it into the algorithm of, of the actual user and then more people see the post. So engagement is really, really important. I started recently following the most fantastic um, these guys are just marketing rock stars. I love them. They're called Reforge. And this is something that I've been applying to all my thinking over the last year or two. And essentially, I like to think of where social media fits in within this picture because social has to tap into a broader marketing needs. I liaise very closely with PR. We speak with events. We know what, um, what the SEO guys are doing. I don't like to work in silos. I like to have a conversation with the whole team. And once a month, we all come onto the same page and we have an understanding of what everyone's efforts are. And we have a, a bigger view of, of the digital footprint and what we're trying to create. So what's really cool about this race car is one of the things that you want to look at is um, what is this framework? And you've got these four pillars here the growth engine, turbo boosts, the fuel, and the lubricants. So the growth engine is really about self-sustaining growth loops. How can I make my content go viral? What is the performance marketing around that? What content am I creating and am I pushing sales? You know, these are things that grow your business continuously. So you want to focus. It's almost like having a stove with four pots on it. And these are your four pots that are bubbling. And you're constantly checking on how's my growth engine doing? How's my performance How's the sales? Then I look at my other pot on the stove, that's also bubbling. It's my turbo boosts. What's happening as one-off events? Is it PR? Is it events? Is it a big advertising campaign that we're going live with on TV or radio? How does that plug into social? Um, I was talking about that lovely compliment that I got from a client the other day, but it's a PR company and they were so grateful that we elevated a lot of their PR efforts. They were getting the most phenomenal articles released in the PR space with Forbes and CNN, and we just spoke about it on social and we gave it a room to, to thrive. We were very specific about the channels that we posted it on. We didn't put it on all channels. It was just predominantly LinkedIn, but we got amazing reach and engagement just off that. So those turbo boosts, and, and I think the term speaks to itself, those little boosts of energy that are just the the bigger branding efforts, and then how social media can support those. Um, we look at the lubricants, which is optimizations that make the growth engine run. So again, it's like improved cu customer conversion. So 
I train all my community managers to be able to have an FAQ document that is signed off by the client so that we have the tone right, we are polite, we are presentable, we are helpful, so that if any consumers are asking us a question about a product or they're stuck or there's an issue, that that community manager doesn't just copy-paste, they personalize it a little bit and they really make that consumer feel like this person is taking, and this brand specifically, is taking the time to attend to my needs um, and I, I cannot stress it enough how important customer re retention is and how important community management is. And I find a lot of brands sometimes want to do social media, but they don't want to invest in the community management. And you can come in really lean on community management. You can do just like an hour a week, 10 minutes a day, making sure that all conversations are met, everyone is responded to. And as you start to talk more with your community, you'll see that your community gets busier and then you might have more of a need for community management. But don't ever disregard community management. It is so essential to the whole running of social. Social media can be a very scary place. There's a lot of platforms and there's a lot of channels and it can be difficult to decide which ones are right for your brand. So I think it's really important to do a bit of an audit for your brand and see where conversations are being ha had. For example, if you're in, uh, still in manufacturing, you might just want to have a Facebook and a LinkedIn profile and possibly a YouTube channel um, and then focus more on, on, on Google and SEO. For a brand like perhaps Pepsi or any FMCG brand, you know, you want to be on Instagram, Twitter, if you're brave enough, because Twitter can also be quite an intense place um, and is known for, for a lot of complaints being accessed. But if your community manager is equipped and ready to manage those conversations, what a wonderful place and space and opportunity to handle issues and problems and change the brand perception and encourage community members to also jump in and help answer questions and, and everyone's kind of helping each other around a brand and, and a, a similar love of that brand. So having a solid presence on social media is almost essential in 2022. Um, you need to decide which channels you want to be on. I don't believe you need to be on every channel. And you can even come in lean on starting on one or two channels, then identifying that your audience is maybe on another channel that you were not so certain of. That's also okay. Then opening up on that channel, but just managing them all in order to increase brand loyalty and make sure that your customer satisfaction across all those channels is beautiful content, consumers being responded to, and I'm telling you that is part of the recipe for success. So which is our most popular social media channels? This comes from the latest report from Hootsuite. Like I said, I encourage you all to go download it. It's the new digital trends report on the Hootsuite. Um, you'll find it under the resources tab. And Facebook comes in still at top, even though they recently lost like 10% of their followers. It was kind of a blip in the ocean in the bigger picture of things. Um, people are still very much active on there. YouTube is one of the absolutely most powerful channels. And if you can learn and start crafting amazing video content, it's, it's so deeply beneficial. But also don't forget to attend to the comments on YouTube. It's really important as a brand to monitor those comments, see what people are saying and try and gauge if you can. WhatsApp, I'm going to talk about a little bit more just now because it's a very, very powerful business tool. And I've seen some extraordinary things be done on WhatsApp. It can be very time consuming, but it's so rewarding for a business and done right. I cannot stress enough how fantastic it is for business, the WhatsApp for business platform. We've got Instagram, WeChat, TikTok we know is rocking and rolling. All the Gen Zers love it. It's, it's, a, it's an intense place, but it's fascinating and it's very quick, snackable content. Facebook Messenger, there's a lot of AI that's been integrated into Facebook Messenger so that you can have plugins with bots and you can craft user journeys in terms of Messenger, which is also very time-saving. So you can prep a whole variety of possible questions that consumers might have. You can prep the answers to those questions for Facebook Messenger and it runs like an automated conversation. And if you have a fantastic copywriter like I do, um, they will craft those, those message responses in the most authentic, non-robotic way, if I can say that, and you can have some lovely, lovely conversions. What's done really, really well is short-form video content. I do have these two links that I want to play, and perhaps I'll just play it at the end. 
um, or I can quickly play it now, but um, Leo Messi and Pepsi did, a, did these amazing short series of content and it was all around a challenge. This first one here with him placing, um, what's he got there? It's this, I don't know, it's something small there on the spoon, but these are very small snackable pieces of content. I mean, obviously Leo Messi is an absolute rock star in the soccer world, but these pieces of content are just engaging, they're fun, and this is why platforms like TikTok do so well. The image on the right is also a video, and that is, was more of a challenge that played out between the various soccer players. And the way they filmed it was the soccer ball bounces over to the other side, and these two people are in two different countries, but it's this, this, this game and this conversation that happens. And I think that's what's so wonderful about social media is we're able to have these conversations across the world with different people and it gives us this opportunity to connect and I just I love these pieces of content so I think I'll play them at the end for you. Here's what I was telling you about with WhatsApp for Business. Um, it's people's favorite followed by Instagram but at the same time it's a free to download app. You can register your WhatsApp for Business um, profile on a number. I, I suggest getting a new number for it. Um, and then you can run your, your, your business off WhatsApp business. You can set hours that you want people, because obviously you don't want people messaging you at like one o'clock in the morning or whatnot and feeling like they're unattended to. As we have community rules on platforms, you can say business hours from eight till five, but you can share catalogs in WhatsApp business. You can share updates. People can ask about products. It's an incredibly powerful tool and done correctly. I really, really feel it's a, more intimate, more personable social media channel, and that a lot of businesses have a, a, a great amount of success by actually using this tool. And I encourage you to please explore a little bit more about WhatsApp for Business. It's one of my absolute favorites. User-generated content is also phenomenal. If you're able to craft messaging and posts and content that encourage users to share themselves using your brand or your product or sipping on a drink or eating a packet of chips or visiting a particular venue or um, being at, a, at an event, you know, these are wonderful, wonderful pieces of content because essentially what they do is they drive brand loyalty, but also it almost works like an automatic referral. And there's nothing better in this world than a referral. Social media, marketing, all these things are wonderful, but a referral coming from a trusted source is one of the best things ever. So we did a campaign recently where we, we did a series of social media challenges. We had four social media challenges and every challenge encouraged the user to be, to send us a photo of them in situ, be it at Christmas time with their family at meal time, or maybe having an ice cold beverage in their cooler box. We did a fun one where we said, show us it's a new year. Is it your glass half full or half empty? Um, and people just, were so forthcoming and just shared amazing, fun photos of themselves with their family, enjoying the product. And we just had this wonderful myriad of like hundreds of consumers sharing content of them enjoying content. So there are fun and easy ways that you can encourage people to do user-generated content. It might need a bit of a competition hook. There might be a bit of a giveaway that you need to link to that. Um, but always try to link that giveaway back to your brand if you can, because you're not trying to sell another brand, you're trying to sell your brand. So, you know, if you can customize that item, be it a, a shirt or, um, or a product or that product that you want to partner with for, for the giveaway is relevant to your brand. So it all just stays authentic. But doing competition style things with social media challenges or, or little giveaway elements and then encouraging user generated is fantastic. The thing that it also opens up is now you have this consumer that's shared a moment in their day or their life with you. You now have the opportunity to also send that consumer a message and say, hi, Mandy. Hi, you know, Tapiso, I love your photo. It's so fun. Would you mind if we used it on our social media channel for a post or for an Instagram story? And you ask permission. And if that user says, sure, you know, I love your brand. Would you mind maybe sending me a hamper, you know, if you want to use my picture or they say, no, I'm not comfortable or, you know, I'm actually an influencer and it, it, it's, um, um, it clashes with another um, uh, product or brand that I work with, but I still, you know, like deep down inside secretly, I love your brand so much, you know, 
it opens up these conversations and you start to have these one-on-one conversations with your audiences. And it's so nice because now you're engaging with your consumers, you're chatting to them, you've got almost like a, 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 a big like myriad picture of images of exactly who you're talking to. And it, it's just sometimes those insights can be quite astounding. You know, you can think that you're marketing to a particular LSM and then the data that's coming through user-generated content actually shows you another side. Perhaps it's a different demographic and that learning can then be applied to other content. And then you can say, all right, let's test it out. Let's um, create a few pieces of content that speak to this other demographic, see if that resonates. So there's wonderful insights that can be pulled from user-generated content, besides just making your brand relevant in, in spaces. Don't forget the power of Google reviews. I am an avid Google reviewer. I, I, I think it's my most powerful social media pro- platform. I'm the most famous on there. I think I've got almost half a million views on my reviews, um, but I know businesses really appreciate them. And so don't forget to look at your Google reviews, encourage people to send you Google reviews. Once you've closed off a, uh, um, uh, I don't want to say a relationship, but an interaction with, with a client, perhaps they've stayed at your hotel or they've experienced your event, you know, send a link and encourage them to leave you a great Google review. It is the most powerful thing for your business. And I absolutely believe in in encouraging people to please leave Google reviews. I've given a quick overview of the social media trends that are on the scope for 2022. I only want to really touch on about eight of them. TikTok will become huge. It is going to continue to grow. And if your brand can be relevant on TikTok and it fits your brand voice, and your demographic and audience is there, I highly encourage you to join TikTok. But be very careful on TikTok that you're not just crafting ads. TikTok users want to see fun content. So try to keep that in mind. It's fine if you want to put a bit of, you know, your your latest and greatest beautiful TV ad or some animation that you've done, but they really want to be entertained. So just be very cognizant of the type of content that you put out on TikTok. Smaller networks will become popular for for ads. So some of the smaller social media um, uh, networks that are starting to emerge, uh, besides the the big metas and Instagrams and things, there will be opportunities to to run ads on those platforms. And I encourage you not to just focus on the big social media networks. There are smaller networks and there is a lot of value in spending a little bit of ad spend with them. Social e-commerce trends will boom in 2022. I've just recently partnered with an absolutely fantastic um, social, me- uh, social media e-commerce integration specialist, and we are doing a lot of integrations for our brands in terms of Instagram, Facebook, and their Shopify accounts, and it's been a wonderful journey, and I really just encourage any brand that hasn't optimized their social media offering for e-commerce to please put that almost at the top of your priority list. Video content will continue to dominate. We know that people enjoy video. We know that video resonates and gets higher engagement. Paid media advertising will become a necessity. These platforms are created and geared for us to spend money. You know, you see very stark differences in organic reach and paid media reach. And so we need to put budgets aside, even if they're small and you want to test the waters, not a problem. And you can eventually, uh, and that's what I've done with a few brands, proved that we were able to get the return and the results, and then we were allocated more budget, you know, and so that's wonderful. Influencer marketing will continue to soar. So some people hate influencer marketing. They feel that it, it, it doesn't bring the conversions that they want, but then be smart about it. Put a promo code there. Say for every um, promo co- code usage, I can quantify my investment in you as, a, as an influencer. But also don't look to just big influencers with like million followers, 500,000 followers. There's a lot of micro influencers and even what we call nano influencers that have smallish communities of 5,000 to 10,000 followers, but are really a respected voice in their community, are brilliant content creators, will charge you a tenth of what a macro influencer would charge. And you can maybe even take half that budget and choose two or three nano or micro influencers and have just an effective reach. I think it's, it's, it's important to, to understand with the influencer what is a return that you want and then just to be able to quantify that return. 
increase in the use of social media for customer service and mobile communication. So that's something that we've seen grow. And I, I, I talk about the community management element and how we must never forget how important it is to handle the customer service, to engage with comments, to encourage users to know that we're there and we're listening and we turn around time is about a day to two days at the most in case. And you let that user know, I've got your query. I'm escalating it to the team. I will get you more information and I'll get back to you. And that community, community manager then refers back to that information. And Reels will contribute to Instagram to be part of just, I mean, Reels are insane. Like the amount of reach and engagement that I see on Reels is actually astounding. I see we've got 10 minutes left. So I'm just, I'm on my last two slides. So just thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, the other thing is how to build an all-star social media team. I have a, a rock star team. Like I love them so much and they are the best in the business. So we have assessed the situation. We know exactly what the goals are for us as a business and also for our clients. And I know how many people I need to allocate to each brand in order to achieve what I need. So on most of my clients, I have a designer, I have a copywriter, I have a community manager, and then I will be the strategic lead and manage the client. And then my team is then briefed. We, they all understand what we need to do. We have a status meeting and everyone, um, we plan in advance and everyone is very, very clear on what their role is in terms of our social media team. So over there, we have the digital marketing strategist and then our content crafters and then our community manager. Don't forget that you need to always analyze your social. You have to stay agile. Learnings will come up. Something will happen. I once uh, um, took a photo with a very famous DJ, was so excited to put it out on our brand page, put it out, and the next day he was in the news for saying something that was controversial. Um, we had to be agile. We had to take it down. We had to respond immediately. But at the same time, it was a lovely opportunity at the time, but it kind of backfired in a short amount of time, but we attended to it very quickly. Also, there was that whole red flag, green flag trend that, that came out on Twitter. We saw that people were tagging their red flags and their green flags. We crafted content for brands where it was relevant around what are the green flags and the red flags in that brand, and we had a bit of fun. Same thing's happening with the Tinder swindler right now. Some brands are having a lot of fun um, making like Tinder swindler, swindler kind of like joking stuff. But again, only if it's relevant to that brand and they can be more playful. If your brand is more serious and more B2, um, B2B, you don't even want to play there. So apply the feedback that you can see from your team and your community manager. Your community manager should supply you with suggestions and learnings at the end of every month to say, this is what performed, these are my suggestions, and you take those to heart and see how you can apply those. Keep testing and keep optimizing and just repeat that. A few last tips. Set up Google Alerts for keywords. Whatever your business might be, identify some of the keywords. You can pull them easily from your SEO provider. Set up alerts on Google, and then you will start to track on a daily basis the types of conversations that are being had around the world, around your brand, around your industry. I really love Google Alerts. Create templates that are optimized for sizes across all your platforms. So for Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, they're not all the same size. You can't post squares across everything. Create your templates according to the platform and have your artworks modified so they are completely optimized per platform. And then tailor your content to each platform. Not all pieces of content need to go on every platform. Make sure that the messaging and the content that you're putting out is relevant to the audience that exists on that platform. Otherwise, it's just adding to the noise. Don't forget that social media is part of the bigger marketing funnel. It's really important, like I mentioned earlier, to tie us in and let us have conversations so we can see how we can best optimize and serve the other marketing efforts that are happening within the organization. Creating content to drive sales. We know that and we know that leadership content is a wonderful way to drive that. Social media is here to drive the narrative. We want to remind audiences about the brand and we really want people to talk about your brand. Community management, I did speak about that. It's about brand health. It's about attending to pain points. Listen to the room. It's really important to be hearing what people are saying about your brand, following hashtags about conversations, and you will then come in. You won't make mistakes by speaking about things that could be controversial. I mean, controversial, controversial, troublesome, possibly negative to your brand. 
there's a sensitivity attached to it. Um, we've seen lots of examples of how brands have made mistakes by not listening to the room. Use data to drive your future insights. The data will tell you what content is performing well, where you're performing best, what's resonating. Take those insights and apply them. If you have time and you can brief it into your, to, to your team and your service provider, a brand playbook is wonderful for social. It shows how assets roll out across social. If your social media manager, God forbid, gets taken away by aliens and someone has to step in and have a, at a glance take the will intermittently, that playbook is going to be your little Bible to guide you on social and have a reminder to everyone about what your brand voice is, how you put yourself out, look and feel, messaging, hashtags, tone of voice. It becomes a really, really essential um, thing to have. Borrow and repurpose. Every social media platform has its own tips to optimize so you can research, apply, and test these constantly. Use thumbnails and captions. Create a, a, like a two-minute explainer, a video about your brand, and you can always cut that down to 30 seconds in one minute, but it really gives people an idea of what your brand is about. Make use of shops on Instagram and engage with Facebook groups. I found an amazing group for one of my clients with a million followers. We've formed a brand ambassadorship with them, and we are rocking and rolling, and we have a beautiful relationship with them, and they're just a closed Facebook group. Um, I just want to end off by saying AR and VR are things that I see that are going to be coming in the future. Google have done some amazing stuff. Pepsi did this amazing video. I don't think I'll have time to show everyone it, um, but perhaps I can quickly tick on it. But um, we're going to see this as an emerging technology, so just keep your eyes on it. Don't, don't, don't be scared. It's very exciting, and it's just going to make social media that much more awesome. So thank you very much.